Well, hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I am uh, laid up after a shoulder surgery, so I'm gonna take this time where I can't really do a bunch of heavy tasks and do a video I've been thinking about doing here for a while, which is basically a review kind of overall on this uh, Deutz D4506 tractor. Get my thoughts, feelings, the good, the bad, the neutral, and uh, share that with everyone in case you're either just curious about these tractors or if you're thinking about buying one one day. So I'll just hop in. Again, this is just my uh, my review, my thoughts, and my feelings. And uh, if you have one of these or similar tractor, uh, definitely comment below. I'd love to hear from people. I know these are a bit more obscure on the um, in the U.S. where I'm at. I'm in the mid-Atlantic, um, in the East Coast. Yeah, so let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and I'll give you the overview. Um, so kind of the background, I got this tractor about five years ago when I moved to my new property looking for really just a utility tractor um, to get chores done. One of the big things I wanted was a front end loader um, to turn over compost piles and load things and unload things. Um, so this one has a pretty much a, maybe it's standard size, but it's it's an older loader, this is a great bend. Um, it's kind of a beast of a loader. So, we'll get into that in a few minutes. But, so this tractor, you know, had its, uh, you know, had its, uh, had its little rough spots and its gems. So, one of the gems was, uh, I mean, ooh, where's that attack beard? Yeah, I think I got 1,300 hours. It was, I probably put a couple hundred hours on there. So, assuming that is correct, which I don't have any reason to believe it's not, um, this was definitely a low hour tractor, a little, little rough around the edges. Like those lights are beat up and not connected. None of the electrics, uh, work. These are, yeah, none of the electric lights work. These are all loose or, or broken. Um, I've never always just had more important things to do, um, versus getting those things uh, fixed, but it's always on the list for one day. Um, overall though, it had everything I wanted, it had a front end loader, um, it was diesel, um, had a three point hitch PTO. It's a 540 RPM PTO. So it does not have the, uh, higher speed, but so far 540 has been good. Um, again, I use this for utility purposes, turn over compost. The closest thing that I do to anything you could call agriculture with it is, um, baling hay. So I have this, uh, most, that's probably the biggest load is on there. It's this, uh, sold new Holland 68 hay baler. I run that, um, cut it with that sickle bar there and the old sidebar rake over there. I got plenty of videos making hay and, and it runs that, uh, it runs this, uh, this small square baler with no problem and pulls it up the hills. So if you are thinking about buying one of these for, um, uh, baling hay, um, yeah, don't, don't, don't be, won't be shy. It runs that with no problem. So the good that I like about this tractor, um, it's pretty straightforward. It's air cooled, which is nice. There's a lot less, you know, items that can go wrong. Um, it's just powered by one belt up in the front, so you do have to keep an eye on that. Make sure your um, fins are clean, but Deutz makes that very easy to do. It's just some snap covers that you can pull off. I'll put a link below or to the playlist where I have all sorts of videos covering taking care of this. Um, those are easy to keep clean, um, so I definitely do like that feature. Uh, fuel efficiency. I've run a number of tractors over the year. I don't have hard numbers or anything, but I can tell you what, um, myself, is my experience and then others out there uh, agree um, on forum boards and such. I don't know what they do with these things, but um, it seems like you can run them forever um, and they are very uh, easy on fuel. So uh, that is really nice, especially with diesel, you know, even all for a diesel being over $3 a gallon right now, pretty much has been that for the last couple of years. So that is nice um, that it just sips the fuel. That is really nice. Uh, Easy starts and reliability, even in the cold weather. Um, it has an air intake heater, sort of like, you know, Cummins engine would. You know, there's no glow plugs. It just heats the intake. Even without running that intake, um, it doesn't get really cold where I'm at. You know, I think the coldest I did, uh, I have a video there, but, you know, it gets below freezing, but nothing super cold. Very rarely negative numbers here. But even when it's as cold as, it's get, as, cold as it gets here, this thing fires up, no problem. Um, what are some of the other positives that i have on here uh maintenance is pretty easy uh for the filters especially if you didn't have this loader on here um oil filter fuel filter injection pump um it's all right there rock solid easy to get to no issues 
Um, same with transmission, uh, transmission hydraulic items, uh, pretty easy to get to. Everything's accessible. Nothing there. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, I mentioned the, uh, reliability. Um, that engine always fires right up. Never had any issues with that thing other than, you know, self cause problems like running out of fuel or such. Okay. So now again, to some of the more, uh, neutral stuff that, uh, you know, this one's kind of maybe, maybe it's personal, maybe it's not. The, I've always felt kind of claustrophobic getting on this tractor and operating it. Um, I've grown up um, operating, you know, older American or, you know, Ferguson tractors or whatever. But, um, you know, it, basically, you know, it is pretty, pretty tight climbing up on here. Um, and then when you're up in that driver's seat, it's kind of like a, you know, just claustrophobic feeling. I always feel kind of penned in. I don't know whether that like bothers uh, other people or if it's just a me thing, but I personally, you know, you can see, I, maybe this seat, I do need to modify. That's an aftermarket seat, but maybe I can modify it to give myself some more room. I'm a little over six foot, so maybe that's part of the, part of the problem. But I mean, you can see, you know, it's pretty, pretty tight there. Um, pretty tight to the fender. I mean, it doesn't make a nice elbow rest, but um, you know, I just prefer the feeling of a more open tractor where you just have more space around you. I'm sure it'd help if I didn't have this valve block there, but even without that, I mean, it's still no, no extra room there. You can see it's just how tight this fender comes in. I've looked to see if you could modify it. I mean, it wouldn't be easy. I mean, it's doable, but it wouldn't be like the easiest job to, um, to modify it. Part of my, uh, thoughts were, oh, sorry, it's kind of hard climbing around with one arm in the sling here. I have thought about flipping these tires around to make a wider wheelbase and then putting some sort of spacers um, with these fenders to space them out. But again, like unless you really started hacking things apart, which I want to do, um, you know, you just can't, can't really fix that. So uh, that's one of the neutral things. Not so happy about that. Um, what else we got? That's kind of a annoyance. Um, the, this is actually take it, kind of bouncing back and forth. This intermediate P, intermediate PTO clutch is pretty nice for, um, you know, loading up when you turn on the PTO with the heavy heavy loads like a baler. Uh, but the engaging of the PTO that's always been kind of uh, troublesome. Where um, and again, reading online, everyone kind of agrees. You know, whenever you're trying to get that in, there's always a little bit of chatter, and you got to kind of feel it and push it in, um, and try not to have it chatter too much, which is annoying. So. I don't really recall having that issue with other tractors, but maybe I just got lucky. Um, so yeah, that's nice. Um, I don't know. There used to be some sort of spring contraption to hold the, uh, your, um, excuse me, your, uh, three point lift, um, in place. I have, that's long gone, whatever it was. And, uh, I just used that, uh, Harbor Freight watering clamp, which works good. But again, whatever was there, um, as long gone, it would have been nice if there was something more robust. Oh, what else we got? Two speed, high, low, five, or excuse me, high, low, and then four gears. Um, yeah, that's uh, one of those, um, the, uh, excuse me, the uh, reverse is something a little unique. So slow speed reverse is very slow, which is nice when you're trying to be precise, but can get quite um, tiresome if you're trying to back up more than a couple inches. And then, uh, High speed review for reverse. I do use that occasionally, but um, makes you, uh, you know, take your uh, life into your hands there for a couple minutes. Uh, it is scary fast. Um, definitely, you better uh, be ready for it. Um, so, <laughs> would be nice if there was some sort of a less extreme, um, you know, either you know a middle ground there, not just the uh, you know full full speed or or turtle. Um, so we covered that. Uh, we covered. Uh, Maintenance, did everything. Um, so loader, um, hydraulic speed, that's another one. Um, sorry, I'm walking all around here trying to get shots as I'm talking. Uh, I, I see a lot of people online that will complain, say these Deutz uh, are really slow with the loader. Uh, I mean, I guess it's a bit, you know, I'm not gonna fire it up right now because I got one arm, but um, I don't know. I mean, it depends on what you're doing. So, I mean, the loader to me, like, for like utility purposes, homeowner ish type things. Like I don't have any trouble with it. Um, you know, lifting and turning over the compost or using it to 
you know, move firewood or, you know, hold something up in the air while I'm working on it. Like, that's all fine. Um, and I think, and again, like my, you know, my, my father has a, a Kubota with a bucket. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't say it's much slower than that. Uh, I mean, I think if you're looking for high speed front end, op- front end loader operations and like repetitive use, I mean, maybe buying an older tractor of any type um, with a front end loader really isn't what you should be looking for. Um, probably a skid loader. Um, I've run plenty of skid loaders, and by comparison, yeah, this bucket's way slower than a skid loader. But, I mean, again, I, I, I'm not sure what someone would be in a, such a, like a commercial money-making environment where time matters. Um, I'm really not sure why someone would select a, a tractor with a front-end loader over a uh, an actual, like, wheel loader or a um, a skid loader. So if you really need if you really need the front-end and that's really what you're worried about and having attachments on there uh, – a t- you know, utility tractor, especially an older one, it's probably not what you should be getting. Uh, you're probably better off picking up an old skid steer and uh, using that. But again, I definitely have need for the PTO output and the uh, pulling ability. So, you know, you're not going to be making hay with the skid loader. Well, maybe you could. I don't know. be interesting. Um, oh, so what else we got? The um, That's all good. Uh, my feelings out on the, the front end loader. Uh, pretty, pretty straightforward back here. Nothing too, too crazy. It's got everything you need. It's got, um, you know, built in, uh, adjustments to take up your slack on the, uh, lower lift arms there. It's got the original, um, Deutz, uh, top link there that you can adjust. Um, it's got all sorts of settings. Again, I'll put a playlist below. It's got all these details. It's got all sorts of different settings for, um, if you're doing draft control and, you know, crop work, which I've never done with this tractor, so I've never really had to implement any of that. It's got a set of remotes on the rear, but those are tied up with my, my loader. Actually, I bent the bracket there on, so got to fix that one day. That's a different story. Um, PTO shafts, easy to access. Uh, you know, you got the um, loud brush hog there. Um, got the, uh, sorry, I'm drawing a blank, uh, the, the, the draw bar. Um, so you got a center draw bar. Um, for pulling heavy items, again, um, that's pretty much for me. I use that for the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, hay baler, that connects, uh, let's see if I can get that camera there. Yeah, so it's just got that big old welded bracket there, and I got a pin up there that just goes through that draw bar. Um, and it's a swinging draw bar to a point, so these those little bolts um, right there, you can fish those up pretty quick. And then uh, you can see all those holes in that plate there, so you can swing that draw bar whichever way you need. So like, you know, the sickle bar needs it off to the side. So that makes it easy. And again, you see all those holes and adjustments there. Lots of sensitivity items. Um, yeah, maybe I will modify that seat and um, move it back. The seat was essentially gone when I bought the tractor. So I had to get something on there pretty quick versus the sheet of foam and cardboard on top of the rusted bucket that was there. Um, all right. So now for uh briefly before I uh, wrap up here. I say that, but I'll probably go on for another 10 minutes. Um, the, my one reg- regret, and I, you know, I have, of course have a, a wish list when I bought everything, or when I bought, when I bought this tractor, I had a wish list of all the stuff that I wanted, but you never get everything you want. A two wheel drive tractor, especially one with the front end loader. Um, I don't know if I would do it again. Um, I don't, I'm not going to deal with selling this and buying another one. I'm just sticking with what I got for right now. The There are plenty of times, and I guess a lot of this would probably really depend on where you're going to be at, um, if you're going to have hills. I um, uh, can't really see it, but, you know, down, putting your x-ray goggles through that wall, wall of the barn there, or shed, um, the hill's pretty steep. So... Like, there's a section that I would love to cut hay on, but I can't just because, you know, there's just no way. It's not going to happen. Um, can't make it up there into a drive with the baler on the back. Um, I, I have kept my eyes open for chains for these. I know chains can really help, but um, I'm not sure how much that would really get me, especially if you have a load in the front end um, front end loader. Those tires are filled, so that does help. Um, but, yeah, like, if it's uh, icy, snowy, I mean, honestly, I don't even bother pulling this thing out. Um, those tires just slip and slide and nothing you can do. Um, I might be a little harsh on this tractor because one feature that is not working that is on my 
list is that pedal right there is the differential lock um, that was broken from the time I got it along with the, uh, it's connected in with the, uh, I can't really get there, the parking brake and uh, pivot brakes. So, or not the pivot brakes, the, uh, the emergency brake. That's connected to that, that um, same shaft that that intermediate, uh, I believe that is, I could be misspeaking, that that um, intermediate, the uh, differential lock is connected to. So maybe this thing would do wonders um, if the differential lock was working. Um, I'm gonna have to get inside the axle tube and figure out what's going on. That thing is just locked up solid and uh, like not locked up with it on, locked up with the uh, differential lock not working, I guess disengaged. Um, so yeah, you know, one tire can break free and then spins, you know, instantly digs a hole 18 inches deep. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe it would be a lot better and I could just go up hills and just, you know, as soon as I hit a hill or straight section in the winter, I could just hit that differential lock and it would work wonders. I, I doubt that would always be the case. So, I mean, I don't think I'm saying anything new for anyone that has a two-wheel drive tractor in any sort of, you know, wet, mucky or hilly terrain. Um, it's just a, a battle that you have. But again, for just having one tractor, I probably would have uh, probably would have gone um, four-wheel drive, maybe held out a little bit longer, but this was a really great deal I got on this tractor. So again, eh, you can hear the hesitation in my voice. These look like, you know, four-wheel drive, but I actually put these on because the old tires were completely gone, um, like balloons. I thought they were going to blow out any minute. But uh, when you look at the pictures, even the two-wheel drive came with this kind of, I mean, I like the look of that tread. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, so they came with them. So I bought those, uh, those Turkish tires that, uh, you know, look similar. Yeah, I like it. It looks cool. But um, closer to the OEM, right? And um, yeah, yeah. I mean, tires are good. Back ones, those are, uh, I'm sure they're original. Um, these tractors are out of Germany. And that tractor says made, or excuse me, that Goodyear tire says made in West Germany. So uh, unless someone imported one from West Germany, which I highly doubt, um, I'm sure that's the original factory tire. I'm shiver. I shudder to think of the price um, of what that'll be to replace when the day comes, but I'll just not think about that for now. And yeah, other than that, um, yeah, it's a really solid tractor. Um, I guess the other thing I haven't really covered is uh, parts. Um, that's something that is important that I shouldn't forget about. Um, so parts for these tractors, I, you know, I guess that's a good thing. I've never needed anything like a clutch or anything major. Um, minor items are easy to get. Um, I replaced that muffler that was on, you know, plenty of places, uh, Amazon, eBay, you could get them. Uh, I only got one arm, so I can't really do it, but, uh, the alternator needed an alternator again. That was, you know, Amazon or eBay, very easy to find. Um, everything else, belts, hoses, lines, all that, you know, those are all, um, regular everyday items. You get tractor supply or Napa, nothing unique there. Um, but yeah, definitely I would think if you need, um, for instance, one of these arms, I can't remember if it's this one or another one. One of these is kind of messed up. There's like a key in there and stuff, and the some must have come loose at some point, and someone didn't catch it, and like the uh, keyway is all egged out. I made a half halfway repair there to kind of get it a little bit better. But like this arm, you know, it, you know, I think I found a couple of them, um, you know, online, you know, that were in Eastern Europe for hundreds of dollars to get shipped. I've never. I mean, I think there are quite a few sellers around. Um, and if you do know them, please leave a comment below. I'd appreciate that. And others would, I'm sure. I think there are a few tractor houses around scrapyards that, you know, have specialize in these Deutsch tractors and have a collection of them. But again, I've never needed anything bad enough, um, like a big ticket item, um, to, to justify going with that, which I guess is a good thing that I've not needed anything. But, uh, you know, um, what else is there? Like, I think clutches and some other big, big, bigger mechanical items. I have seen those available new. Um, aftermarket, um, readily available, but I think anything else, um, you're going to be hard pressed. You're probably going to have to find a few of the, um, dealerships out there that specialize in this. So I think I'm trying to think, I think I pretty much hit all the, uh, the pros, the cons, the items in the middle. Uh, nothing would be complete without a, uh, got this one armed. No review would be complete without firing it up. Listen to that sound. Again, uh, so this thing's about, again, yeah, that's me, like, just trying to get my boot leg through there. Um, it's not the easiest with, uh, with this, so let's go ahead and fire this up. This thing has not run. Um, like I mentioned, I was out of town and had surgery, so this thing has not started for several weeks. So 
you got to be a uh, in neutral and then um, in between the high low range schnell or langsam if you're speaking german so and again yeah let's um i don't know it's hmm, 50 degrees out today so not cold by any means but i'm not even gonna bother using the heater so you can hear how uh how it fires up just give it a touch of touch of gas diesel and uh firing a hole <laughs> later and fire that up and let it run some but we'll wrap up this oh. Oh. I'm running slow <sighs> but yeah so there we go there we have it that's the uh that's the review I'm sure there's something I forgot if there's something super important uh I'll like put it in like caps lock at the top of the video description so make sure you scroll down in case there's some super important thing I forgot to uh mention but I'll put that below Thanks for watching. Uh, if you made it this far, um, definitely go down below. Check out the videos on all the other bits, maintenance and fixing and stuff on this tractor. But again, um, just kind of wanted to give the long form, uh, no hurried uh, uh, review of this tractor um, in case you maybe you're thinking about buying one of these or just like them. So thanks for watching. If there's anything in particular you want to see on this machine, leave a comment below. Um, anything you want to share, definitely let me know. All right, and take care. Till next time.